Welcome back to another video on the mini PC I recently reviewed in the channel, which is called the MN35 Ryzen 5 3550H mini PC, 8GB of dual cham Rano, MVME SSD that's 256GB, and just really good value for money on what this offers for about 319 US dollars or about 265 euros. You have yourself a fantastic mini PC, but there were a couple of things people were asking a lot of is how do we replace the weak wireless card in this? It comes with a Realtek card that's not wonderful, it only has a single antenna. So this video is all about getting the absolute best out of this mini PC. So what I'm going to do is I will show you step by step how to install that second antenna, how to replace and upgrade the wireless card, how to upgrade the SSD if you wanted to do so. I'll also show you how we can install that 2.5 inch drive, what screws you need. I'll show you the parts that I got for this particular video and also go as far as doing a thermal repaste if you want to do that and most importantly pushing the performance using a program that can boost the thermal limits on this. So the TDP, we can increase that because this thing runs very cool. When I pushed it really hard under the stock configuration, it only got up to 73 degrees and it only uses about 44 watts. And the power supply is 65 watts, so we can push it a little more and I'll show you just how to get the absolute best out of this mini PC. So these are the parts I'm going to be using for this particular video. I'm going to be upgrading the wireless. I'm going to add a second or additional wireless antenna here because the antenna is missing the second one. They've only installed one, but it is simple to do, and I will show you exactly how to do that in this video. So this connector that we need, very important, it is the MHF4. I have the Intel Wireless AX. This is the AX200, which has Bluetooth 5, a very good, capable, future-proof wireless card. That's why I recommend it. Now, this video is not sponsored by anyone. I bought all of this stuff myself. And yes, the links in the description for this part are affiliate links. At no additional cost to you, but at least it helps me cover my cost. Now, an optional thing we could do is I've got some screws here that I bought as well. Now, all you need to do is find this size, and that is the 3 by 5 millimeter M3 by five, okay, this is for the screws for the 2.5 inch drive. I'll show you how to install that because they didn't include it in the box. And RAM, I'll show you very quickly how we can add additional RAM. So two sticks of DDR for eight gigabytes here. And this has rated to a higher frequency, but I think the Ryzen 5 only actually supports 2.4 gigahertz. Other optional things as well are installing a faster drive, but it depends on how much money you want to spend. And for not too much extra, we can also do a bit of a repaste on the cooler if you wanted to improve the thermal headroom, lower the thermals even further, and maybe improve the fan noise, but it's actually very good on this particular mini PC. That is Arctic MX4. And again, none of this video is sponsored, okay? Now, I did show this in the full review. To get inside this particular mini PC, there are four rubber feet on the base of it, on the bottom. These need to be pulled off. You simply just pry them off, use your fingernails, uh, you could use a plastic pry tool as well, and they simply come off. Now, you're going to get a little bit of the double-sided sticky adhesive there is going to tear off, but don't worry too much about that. It won't be a problem later on when we put it back on. So you remove all four of them. This is relatively easy to do. And now we need a long stem Phillips screwdriver like so. Okay, this one to get right down inside there to be able to loosen these screws off, which I will do now. All right, so I've removed the four screws. You can see them right there. Now this part is difficult to pry the bottom off. It comes off relatively easy. And the best way to do this is use the screwdriver, simply put it in the socket here where we would have the visa mount bracket, but that is not included in the box. And then pop it up like so, and then it can come off exposing now our two sodium DDR4 slots. We have the MVME right here. Now below this, is our wireless card, which we're going to be upgrading. Now we need a smaller Phillips head, which is the PH00 that I'm going to use right here to remove the MVME screw. Now this is not hard to do, and I'll do that right now on camera, even though I've got the camera in the way here. So that simply just unscrews. And that is how you can upgrade the SSD. So if you don't want, or you want a larger capacity, it's actually cheaper to get the version that is 200, sorry, 512 gigabytes with the 16 gigabytes of RAM if you want that. So you simply need to remove that. And I lost my screw here, but make sure you earthed as well. You don't want to be touching any of the circuitry. 
So this wireless card is very easy to replace. Now you see the connectors are actually different. This one is a lot smaller. As I mentioned before, it is the MH. P4 is the connector style IPEX, and this one is a dated, older, different one. So you simply need to just pry that off, pull that up, because we're not going to be needing this connector anyway. That uh, We will pull that through later on and install the new wireless card. So just slot it in the M.2 slot right here, okay? Make sure the cable is not in the way, and then we do need to screw that down again. So the lid here should just lift off. If you have a bit of trouble, just push from the other side where those screws actually went in with the base and then pull and pry it up. I'm gonna flip it over now to show you what we have here. So this is where the single antenna is. Okay, we can keep this tape, but this, we can either just leave it there and cut it off or just peel it off completely. The wireless antenna, well, that's already actually pulled right through. We're gonna slot the new antenna through the sides there. But while I have this off, you can see that's where the main cooling fan is here. There's a heat sink below this, and I will show you how to do the repaste. This is optional and only for those uh, real techies out there that want to do this to lower temperatures by a few degrees. And for that, we have to undo four screws. Again, remember this is optional, so remove the RAM, the sodium RAM, not hard to do. Make sure again that you are earth, not touching your fluffy cat, long haired cat. Static electricity everywhere would not be so good. Okay, get rid of those, and you will see now we have four screws. So those four screws, they are holding in a metal plate with the fan assembly and everything else, and that is the copper heatsink. So loosening these off, we should then be able to flip it over and remove that fan assembly with the heatsink for the thermal repaste. So there we go, that's the Ryzen APU there, which is the Ryzen 5 3550H. They've got a little bit overboard with the thermal paste, but the paste job is good, good coverage at least there, and really you probably don't actually have to do this. Now the backing here, this is actually made out of alloy, okay? So it is aluminium, aluminium, and I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do now is just clean this right up here and make sure all the thermal paste, the old stuff, is gone on the top on the surface, and then I'm gonna apply that uh, Arctic MX4. Now I have cleaned it up the best I could. I'm not too worried about any of that paste that's on those tiny little resistors. They are very fragile, so I don't want to clean around them too much. I did use some Arctic Clean. That was the material I used to remove that old paste, uh, which wasn't actually a bad quality paste at all. Everyone has their own method on doing this, and I like to spread out an even thin coat is the way I do it, and it's always been successful for me in the way I do this. Now, MX4's got an eight year durability guarantee, so it shouldn't be breaking down for a long time. Now, you can put like about a rust sized shape on there, which uh, that is probably actually a little bit too much. And now I'm gonna use a plastic bag to actually just spread that around nice and thin. Okay, so it's not pretty, and I know there's other methods that are probably better, but this is what I like to do. And there's gonna be lots of stupid comments, and there's all sorts of ways you can do this. So just Google as well, look on YouTube at pasting methods. And now I need to get this back on and get it all screwed into place. And most people skip this step, you don't need to do this. Now when you are putting the heat sink fan assembly back on, make sure you tighten it up from diagonal. So tighten this one just a little, talk that one up here a little, talk that one up, that one, go back to that one, to that one, like that. And that should help spread out that paste evenly. And if you were going to upgrade your RAM up to 32 gigabytes, you can do that now to install the RAM. So you simply just slot it in, push it right to the end, which sometimes can be a little tricky to do. There we go and press down, and you'll hear a click on either side of those clips to hold it in place, and just repeat and do the same for the second slot. And now for the wireless antennas, so they are marked, as you can see, one does state it's the main and auxiliary antenna. So the main one is the black cable, remember this, and then the auxiliary, the white. So that was a fairly weak antenna, very low gain. These ones are slightly better rated. So there are three M adhesive tape strips on here and here, so you need to pull those off and this one right here. So that's the main part of the antenna right there. Now, if you're really advanced and you know exactly where you're gonna place this, you wanna get this particular antenna, the main one, onto the side that is closest to your Wi-Fi router, so your wireless 6 router. But I'm gonna just place them simply one here and I think over here, just space them out a little bit. And you see that sticks on fine without any problems and that is not going to go anywhere. 
And then I'm gonna place this one, the auxiliary one, just over here. I think that's gonna be fine. It's not really too big of an issue considering the distance between them. Now, if you really wanna go a step even further for your wireless performance, you could install one of those external antennas, but that means drilling holes in the actual case, but I won't go that far with this. This should do the job quite well. So I fed the cables through here and there's too much excess here of cable, it's way too long. So I'm going to loop that up and tape it to the top here because you don't want it to get near the fan which is right here and that'll make noise and that'll be very annoying. So here we have where the wireless card is and give it about a length of this much so we can just connect it up because I've gone through the corner right here. Lots of room there, big open gaps of feeding and wiring the cables through there, not an issue. So I removed the little protective sleeves on those antennas. Now they are very, the clips there, the plugs are very, very sensitive. So remember the white one was the auxiliary, the black is the main. So we want to just follow it here. You can see black, main, white auxiliary, and you need to line them up really good. It's fiddly work. So if you've got very shaky hands, or you're not good at this sort of thing, then get someone else to do it. And just use your finger now, once you get it lined up to gently press down on the top there and push that clip into place. As I mentioned, it's really quite tricky and I've got a camera tripod here in front of me. I'm gonna, there we go. I think that's got it. And that is now in place and do the same with the other antenna. Just be very careful, never force it. Now to reinstall the NVMe drive. So if you wanted to upgrade it and you're not happy with the speeds of the stock drive, which is still pretty good for NVMe, way faster than SATA 3, you can do that now. You simply just slot it in. So this here is a Sabrent 2 terabyte drive. And I'm gonna use this one to show you the kind of maximum speeds we can achieve out of the slot PCIe uh, that it has. And I'll screw that simply into place. Just a couple of twists and there it is. It's in there now, our drive. Now let's move on to the SATA 3 drive, SATA 3. Using the cable they do include in the box, we need to slot this in here. See how this is labeled? JFPC1, this is the one we want. So there are two little tabs either side. The contacts go up, okay? Place this in like so. Once it's there and lined up, you need to push down this little tab. So this little tab, you first need to pull it up. These are very fragile, be very careful with it. Perhaps use little tweezers or something if you're uncomfortable with doing this. And press down like so. You don't have to press down too firm. And that is our SATA 3 cable installed. Take your 2.5 inch hard drive or SSD and then plug in the connector. Just push it in like so, line it up. And where is it gonna go? Well, on the bottom, of course, that's where it's gonna go, right here. Now, uh, the cooling for this, there's a little bit of vents here and we do have right there the VRMs. So installing the drive may make these components get a little bit hotter, but I haven't noticed too much of an issue. So that's how it goes in. And using those screws that I mentioned before at the start, the three millimeter by fives, we then need to put those on the side there and screw our hard drive into place and then you flip it about. So the cable, yes, it does get bent a little bit. So you just simply bend it around like so and then put our bottom back on and screw everything into place, put the rubber feet back on and we are set. Now the full review, I go over all this PC in detail, video playback, other performance, things like Linux. Linux runs fine on this. So the wireless car, the antennas are working well. Now, if you wanna get the maximum benefit, of course, out of that particular wireless card that we did install for future proofing, you need to have a wireless six router. They are expensive and most people will probably still have wireless AC, but even so, the antenna's reception is really, really good. It's so much better than what was installed before. And I'm getting transfer speeds about 1.3 to 1.2 um, gigabit. So it's faster than the gigabit LAN that's on here. So really, really good wireless. I'm happy with that change. Now internal storage, if in the future, say in a year's time, or you have a fast NVMe drive, if you install it, don't worry, the slot does function at full speeds. You can see here the speeds are excellent out of that Sabrent drive that I did install here. Now you can get the model with the 16 gigabytes of RAM already and the 512 gigabytes of storage and it'll be operating at about half the sequential speeds here, okay? It's still all right, but I mean, it's not gonna be as fast as say this Sabrent or Samsung 960 Evo or 970 or Evo Plus or whatever, you get the idea. Now the RAM, running in dual channel, no problems. We've already established that in the full review, but as I mentioned before with the BIOS, it won't run any faster. 
So what I'm interested in here is boosting our power limit, our performance, because they have actually toned this down a little bit. So I was looking into some of these details here, and what I have noticed is they've set 30 watts here. So the power limit one is 25 watts, and then it is 30 here watts, and they could have actually gone higher on these limits. So that is why my review, the thermals are so good, fan noise is excellent. So let's see what we can do now to just bolster up that performance. And this is all free, but I just have to say it, this comes at a risk. Longevity of the parts, stressing out the VRMs a little more, pushing these limits. So the program we use for this is called Ryzen Controller, okay? Now this is a third party app, it's not endorsed by AMD, no one else, and it allows us to tweak a lot of things and some of them could actually cause a bit of damage. Now I know from my testing, the power supply 65 watts only got up to about 43 watts, so there is some headroom and thermals definitely head through headroom as well, but it will increase the temperatures, it will increase the fan noise. So jump on the website, you go to the downloads of course, and you get the Windows installation, of course, if you're running Windows. If you're running Linux, then you go for the Linux installations there, and you can also use this to tweak up the power limit. So I'm gonna test that out and report my findings to you and how far we can push this. So our 3D Mark score here, base score, this is out of the box, stock 100%. Uh, we are looking at almost 8,000 points here for 3D Mark's Night Raid score, okay? Which is, which is okay, that's not too bad, but definitely it could perform a lot better than that. Now thermals, we are looking at uh, 70 degrees maximum. So on the CPU, uh, in fact, yeah, 70.5. Before it would get up to 73, 74 degrees. So we're only saving about three degrees to four degrees Celsius doing the repay. So probably not actually worth it for most people to go that far. Okay, so I set some stupid power limits and I'll show you those in just a second. But performance boosted here about 20%, almost 20%. It's like 19.7 or something. And I almost got a world record for Night Raid here with this particular APU, the uh, 3550H. Uh, really good, really good increase, but it's not realistic. This is uh, unreal, not expected anyone to actually run this permanently because I'll show you in a second. So I set really high here, so this is far too high, 55 watts to put on the CPU. I'm gonna have to try this with 45. So there's a lot of tweaking to do to find that good balance between the thermals, the power use, and the wattage and everything, okay, you're gonna be pulling. Now under GPU, I didn't touch this at all. Nothing is gonna change here, so if you try to overclock the GPU clocks, it's just gonna do nothing, okay? So don't bother about that tab on Ryzen controller. Power, I also set some very silly, stupid limits here as well. So again, don't set something this high, just tweak it up gradually and try and get that balance. And why I mean balance, because look at what we peaked at. Now, it only peaked at 7, 97 degrees uh, for a few seconds and the average temperature is still quite good, but that's that's not good. We can't game at 97 degrees, okay? That's just, that's ridiculous, all right? So that's why I have to find a good balance. For me, I would push it into the late 80s, I think is okay, because when looking at the internal temperatures, because the fan sucks a lot of air from the bottom, actually through and passes over the VRMs and everything else, uh, the motherboard is not actually getting too hot. It hasn't been that bad. So I'm going to try and find a bit of a balance here. Then we'll jump into some gaming performance. So I have found a limit here that I am personally happy with. I'm reaching 90 degrees on the CPU, 90.3. And yes, I have done the repaste, which is probably giving me a bit of an advantage here too, okay, with these increased wattages. So back to Ryzen controller, just to show you the settings I went with. So I use 45, which is still quite high. I mean, this still is very, very high, these limits, and 35 especially for the long-term and the short-term boost. So really, if you wanna be on the safe side and your stock, perhaps set this to 40, this one to 30, 25, experiment, and even maybe test 35 with this one if you don't like the fan noise you're getting. Fan noise has increased a little bit when under load. I still haven't even heard it hit 100% RPM yet, and it's still actually not that bad compared to a gaming laptop. And we're getting some really good boosts here because look at the score now back into 3D Mark. Still very, very good. So we have gone from about 8,000 points uh, right now up to 9,550, and we are not too far off uh, this absolute best score here. So that's good. But now some games and we'll see the improvements. 
Okay, so we look at the clock speeds here on the GPU. It can hit 1200 max, but we're still not getting the full actual power that we could out of this particular mini PC. Even so, saying that, there's some more tweaking that is needed. The performance is up on average about 10 frames per second. So when I first reviewed the mini PC, I was getting around an average of 43, 40 frames per second. And you can see this is 1080p with basically normal kind of settings, I would say. A medium population density and the traffic and the viewing distance as well. We're down to 45 now, but it is, with all this traffic around, this is still excellent performance in 1080p. I know it's an older title, but we're getting a bit of a boost here. But we are reaching 83 degrees currently, so it really depends on how much you want to push this particular mini PC. Um, harder, you could probably increase the power limits and the, the, the definitely the wattage. But we risk hitting 90 degrees then the whole time because he gaming right now. It's going to hold about 80s, mid 80s here, which um, I'm happy with. I think this is okay. This is fine. And it's just the chipset itself that is getting very hot here. The power supply, it is bouncing around 65, 60 watts. So we're reaching the max. So it could actually be the power supply now that is a limiting factor uh, with this mini PC. So I'm going to quickly check the Witcher 3 gain, which was another title I tested in the first review. Now with The Witcher, we are seeing a big improvement here. I was about 30 frames per second, down to 30 frames per second around the port here. And look at and the massive difference here we are getting. So less starter, less of those massive frame dips. It has made really The Witcher now so much better. And notice the GPU with this game wants to always sit really at the maximum here, the 1200 megahertz. And that is why we're seeing an incredible boost in performance here making this title at 720p on the low settings, of course, so much more playable, fluid, and this is pretty amazing performance, uh, considering that uh, this mini PC is, is around 300 US dollars, and it can play The Witcher 3 around 44 frames per second here. Very, very good results, and considering that this boost here is free, but be careful with those thermal limits, perhaps do the repaste that I do, did, Play it easy, and I don't take any responsibility for people destroying their, bricking their power supply unit, blowing up on them, or their motherboard frying it, okay? Just be careful, be sensible, and around 80, mid-80s for our temperatures, fan noise is completely acceptable too. And a very quick request here, this was from Kevin to see if the Shadow of the Tomb Raider was playable at 720p with these modifications. And it is. Gameplay wise, you're getting around 40 frames per second. So similar to The Witcher 3, so the demanding AAA titles, older titles, still playable, but lower. Definitely lower the resolution down. 1080p is only going to run about 25 frames per second. It's just too choppy and too laggy, so that's why I would stick to the low resolution and of course the absolute lowest settings, which uh, makes... Some of the graphics look a little bit terrible, but hey, we'll see what happens. And still playable with all the action going on. I know I'm going to die here, but it's still around 40 frames per second. Okay, so there we go. Hopefully that made things a little bit easier. The video is a little bit longer than I wanted it to be because, well, there's so much to explain, for, at least for people out there that are beginners that don't even know where to start with these kind of upgrades. But as you saw, Changing that wireless card a little fiddly with those clips there, well the plugs, sorry, for the wireless card. But once you do that, you really open up the wireless speeds, you get Bluetooth 5. And then using that free software, we can boost the power limits and really boost up the performance of this. And if you're going to game a lot, if you intend to play some light games, emulators or old titles, we get some fairly decent performance and you don't have to pay for that extra. As I mentioned in this video as well, I got these parts where I sourced them was to do with the delivery times because of this video. I don't have three weeks to wait for the parts, but if you do get the parts from AliExpress or from eBay or somewhere else, and you do save a lot of money there in the long run, of course, if you don't mind waiting for a month because the postage is a little bit slow out of China. It's all up, fantastic mini PC. And with these little tweaks, we can just make this thing so much better. So if you missed my original video on this, the full in-depth review, of the MN35. Make sure you do check that out and thank you so much for watching this video here and just getting the most out of this.